Hi everybody, it's Jen with OpenSource.com and I'm bringing you the top five articles from this past week, November 17th through the 21st. At number five this week, we have the OpenSource.com annual holiday gift guide. We have 14 fabulous open source gifts for the holidays for you here. Whether you're looking for something for the hobbyist, the beginner, or maybe even a cool kid, we've got you covered. We started our list this year with the Lulzbot 3D printer, the latest version, the TAS4, and you can also enter to win the TAS4 in our holiday gift guide. Stay tuned to our Twitter and Facebook at the beginning of December for a chance to win. At number four this week, do we have, do you need OpenStack if you use Docker? Natty Shalom is the founder and CTO at Gigaspaces. He's also a leader in cloud and big data. So he gives us some thoughts on this. If you'd like to hear them, check out this article um, about using. At number four, we have, do I need OpenStack if I use Docker? If you use Docker, you may have asked yourself by now if it makes sense to use OpenStack as well. Natty Shalom is the founder and CTO at Gigaspaces. He's also a thought leader in cloud and big data. So check out this article for his thoughts on that. At number three, we have five open source projects making the world a better place that you should know. Dave Neary, a thought leader in humanitarian free and open source software, tells us about five projects that we should know if we don't already, and the reason for that is because they're changing the lives of those in need all over the world. So take, for instance, Yushahidi, a project born out of an upset in Kenya after the result of the presidential election in 2007. It allows people to anonymously report violent incidences. Similarly, Martis, another one on the list, allows testimony from the community of human rights abuses. Check out the other three in the list on site. At number two this week, we have Linux for Lettuce. Investigative journalist Lisa M. Hamilton uncovers the legal and emotional journey to free the seed. Simple questions like, can seeds be made open source, beget tougher and greater questions like, do patents threaten food security and national security at large, and should governments invest in public plant breeding? Think of the labels we see on our foods that say organic or fair trade. Could open source be the next label? Find out where the story ends, and in a sense, where it begins with the open source seed initiative's journey in our article from this week in our Open Food Week series. Finally, at number one, we have Microsoft gets on board with open source. Writer and Google software engineer Luis Ibanez brings us the recap of the big news Microsoft broke late last week on its move to open source. This is an article if you're not super. Finally, at number one, Microsoft gets on board with open source. Writer and Google software engineer Luis Ibanez brings us the recap, brings us a recap of the big news Microsoft broke last week on its move to opensource.net, the server side. This is a great article if you're not super familiar with .NET or want to get more behind the scenes on what exactly has been made available. Finally, Luis wraps up with information on the new .NET Foundation and what this move to open source by software giant Microsoft means for the shifting power of the open source community. Thanks so much for joining me. Get the links to the articles in the notes below, and you can also see the article that recaps our top five here every weekend. Join me next week. See ya.